Thank you for staying with us on the newsroom. I am Abisola Adebayo. Family members of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have raised concerns over threats by the terrorists to kill the victims if the federal government fails to yield to their demands after seven days. The devastated relatives of the abductees say the terrorists have spoken to them directly and are demanding the release of their eight children being held by the federal government in Andamawa State before they will release the 61 abducted train passengers. They however appeal to President Muhammadu Buhari to order for the immediate release of the children to the terrorists so as to secure the release of their loved ones who have been in captivity for the past 59 days. Meanwhile, the federal government has said it would spend about 34 billion naira on the ongoing payment of minimum wage consequential adjustments to the education sector workers with effect from 2019. According to a statement by the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, the beneficiaries include the members of the striking Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and their counterparts in the polytechnics and colleges of education. Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ingege, while speaking to newsmen, explained that the universities would get 23.5 billion naira the polytechnics will get 6 billion naira and the colleges of education would get 4 billion naira, totaling about 34 billion naira. Regarding the ASO strike, the minister says the committee is set up during the last tripartite plus meeting of the government and university based unions were given a fortnight to turn in their report, which they are still working on. Senator Einaya Abaribe has announced that he will not be partaking in the governorship primary elections of the People's Democratic Party PDP scheduled for Wednesday, 25th of May. The Senate Minority Leader made this known in a statement released on Wednesday morning. Abaribe cited failure to establish a level playing field for all aspirants vying for elective offices in the state to participate equally in the primary elections and the interferences of godfathers as a major reason why he was opting out of the exercise. India reported 1,675 new coronavirus cases on Tuesday, taking the country's total infections tally to over 4 million. This was made known in an update released by the country's health ministry on Wednesday morning. According to the update, the active cases in the country increased to 14,841. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19-related deaths has reached 524,490, with 31 more people dying from the infections on Tuesday. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, has recommended tax compliance as a requirement for clearing aspirants to contest for elective positions. The Executive Chairman of FIRS and Chairman Joint Tax Board, Mohamed Nami, made the recommendation at a meeting with the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja on Tuesday. Nami explained the need to promote measures aimed at strengthening the capacity for sustainable and inclusive tax administration in the country, as anyone whose tax status is not in harmony with their declared records should not be entrusted with public offices. Pope Francis has expressed sadness over the school shooting in Texas, which left at least 19 children and two teachers dead and condemned the arms trade. During his weekly general audience, the Argentine pontiff says it is time to address the issue of indiscriminate arms trafficking, urging the American government to ensure that such tragedies can no longer take place. The attack in Uvade, a small community about an hour from the Mexican border, was the deadliest U.S. school shooting in years and the latest in a spree of bloody gun violence violence across America. The United Kingdom government says it had given the green light to Todd Boyle's proposed takeover of Chelsea Football Club from the sanctioned Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich. Secretary of State for Digital Culture, Media and Sport Nadine Dory says she had issued a license permitting the deal late on Tuesday, shortly after it won approval from the Premier League. Meanwhile, the Premier League says its approval inched on the government sale license and the satisfactory completion of the final stages of transactions. Well, that's all on the newsroom at this time. Thank you for watching.